Hi everyone, I'm Ali Reza and today we are going to see how we can create an agentic rag using Langflow. Before diving into the implementation, I would like to walk you through a concept of agentic rag to see what the agentic rag is and what the problem it solves. So this is a basic flow of any LLM solution. You have an input prompt that you query to LLM and then you LLM generates answer to the output for you. The LLM we are talking here can be any large language model and it is the, the large language model data is massive but it's limited to the time that you train the model. For example, if the model is trained on data which is based on until 2023, then if you ask any questions that about uh, this about events that happened after 2023, your model cannot do anything. But at best, the LLM uh, generates answer for you based on the information it has. And basically, as you are already familiar, it's just predicting the, the text for you. So it doesn't understand anything about the text or question that you're asking. So the problem with any LLM solution is uh, exactly about the limitations of data they have. When you have a lot of source data that are outside of LLM, which LLM doesn't have access to, then if you ask any question from LLM, it cannot give you any answer. And if it does, probably it is not accurate or maybe it's not even right. So basically that is a big problem with any LLM solutions because, for example, if you ask any generic questions from any LLM, solution probably it give you a kind of a generic answer but if you ask about the policy documents from your company about any private data source that you have outside of the LLM then LLM does not give you a right answer it predicts something based on the generic information it has but that answer is not correct because of that we created a rag solution and with the rack solution, what we did, we created a retrieval system. With the retrieval system, we are able to retrieve the information from source data. And then together with the input information we have, we can pass it to the LLM. And then LLM based on that, it can generate uh, the, the right answer for us because then you give the right context to the LLM and LLM can generate the right answer. But here, it's even better. It's really nice because then your LLM is enriched with the right data, with the real-time data, and then you can make a use of LLM capability to create a human-like output answer. But here is the problem. If you ask any question that is not related to the LLM information, also not related to the source data, what would happen? Again, the LLM might give you some answers, but those answers are not correct. Again, you're limited to the information you have. So now we come to the situation that even though we provided a lot of data sources, still LLM cannot be really useful for us for all matters. So because of that, we need to do something. And that is how we started using agent. With the agent concept, what we mean by the agent, agent actually use the LLM as a engine for the reasoning uh, side and then decide based on the question you're asking to which tool it has to go to get your answer and then of course use the LLM to generate the output answer for you. So basically when we use the agent we can provide a lot of data sources for the LLM, we can provide a lot of tools also for the LLM. And then with the prompt instructions we give to the LLM, we provide the reasoning uh, flow to say how the LLM should think about this process, on which order should answer or should follow the instructions to go on which tool first, and if that tool is not useful, what should happen next. So all of these things we can define in the instructions for the LLM and then agent, in fact, is going to take care of all of these things using the LLM as a reasoning engine. 
here. So enough about the concept. I think now it's a good time to dive into the line flow and see how we can create our first agentic rack. Let's get started with the implementing the flow for the agentic rack. If you're familiar, this is a, an environment for the line flow that we can create new flows. Either you can use the online version or you can install the community version, which is free on your computer and then start creating the AI flows. So I start with the new flow here. There are a lot of templates here that you can use, but I would like to start with the blank flow. As you noticed uh, previously in the different videos, I tried to create everything from scratch, but today I don't want to do that. I want to reuse one of the templates we already had from the previous videos. If you ever watched my other videos, there's a video about the vector database, how you can create a vector database using Olam and Langflow. You can also download it from the community page for free. So I just download the template. The template is in a JSON format. So I just downloaded it on my computer. And now here, I would like to import the template. I just import the template from here. And here we go. This is the template to create a vector database from your file. I will change the name of this flow to agentic rag. Nice. And it is saved. So first thing first, we already have a flow here. It's a ready flow. You can use it. It's connected to the Olama embedding model. And I'm using Chroma DB to create a vector database. Here you provide your files. So I just provide the file. My file is a story that I created by using ChatGPT. It's about a bird. It's called Homa, and which is always going exploring the, the jungle. It's quite a nice story that I generated with a ChatGPT. The reason I did it because I was just exploring ChatGPT, but at the same time I wanted to create a something that I can use for the rack solutions to test. And that is something that LLM doesn't know about it because it's completely new and it's not part of any training data. So I select this file. Now we have a flow that we use from the template. We can test the flow. In order to test the flow, first of all, you can try it from each component and you can run the component. Or for example, in this case, if I run it here on my Chroma DB, what it does, it actually runs all components are related to this flow and it creates the Chroma DB for me. As you can see, it took three seconds and something to create a Chroma DB vector database out of my PDF file. The other thing is interesting about the Langflow environment. It's about the logs. When you go to the logs, it shows you everything with the timestamp everything's happened in each component with the inputs outputs are accessible here so you can easily trace back to any situation any execution you have done before and then inspect the, the component executions on the left side also you have a lot of components to use that you can drag and drop on your flow to create your flow so normally if you wanted to create a rag solution not the agentic one we also need to have a copy of the vector database for the retrieval because this process only create your vector database but we are not going to use this on the real time agentic rack so we need another uh, chroma db component which is the same as what we have it's also connecting to the vector database we have we also need the embedding model which we can use the same embedding model we have here and now this is ready to use now I want to add an agent to my flow. So basically in order to do that, you can go back to your left side of the screen. And from here you can drag and drop an agent here. Let me zoom in. So with the new agent, we can choose the model provider here. There are a lot of models are available here, but I want to stick to the open AI, the model name. I want to choose a GPT 3.5 Turbo. I'm going to tell you later why. And for the OpenAI API key. So there's a video already in my channel how you can create one. I'm going to paste in my OpenAI key here. And here also we need to put the agent instructions. Agent instructions is quite important because this will be a core of your agent flow that tells agent 
how to proceed with every request within an agent instructions we're going to define responsibilities retrieval strategy response guidelines reasoning flow constraints if you have any constraints and at the end you can also say about the tools are available in your flow let's give it a try to see if this component is working so i just click on the wrong component okay i got that uh, green confirmation here which means that my api is connected here the api key is working now what i need to do i need to complete my chatbot here i need an input and output so i add an input here also an output he here it's a chat input and a chat output okay now we with this just part of the flow which is not connected to the chroma db or vector database we have a kind of a chat gpt it's a kind of a chat gpt that we created here let's go to the playground and hey just ask some questions i always ask this uh, question so here the way it answers us is different from the time that we were using the model because it also shows that a little bit of extra information here about what is happening between input and output currently we are not using any uh, tools from agent and that's why there is nothing specifically here but soon when we connect the agent you will see we had a story here about the homa so let's uh, ask this question who is homa so as you can see it says i'm not sure which specific homa you're referring to so i would ask this question oh this is quite nice i like that it's quite hallucination that i was expecting because the homa and the castle of laughing wings is actually the home and the castle leveling beings is a spiritual community and retreat center located in Creston. so it's a completely different answer that i was expecting but uh, yeah i meant a story so it says it is not familiar with the specific story okay that's nice so this is one thing that now we know that this model doesn't know about that story the other topic I want to cover, it's about the something which is limited to the data of LLM. For example, I'm quite interested in Severance series, which was premiered in Apple TV. Let me ask this question also about this series. So this is correct. It's a Severance uh, series uh, premiered on Apple TV in 2022. Let me ask another question. So as you can see, the season two obviously was premiered in January of 2025, but because of the lack of this information from the model information the model cannot give me that answer and it says i don't have any information about the specific details of season two so we had two issues here one issue was about the lack of awareness about that story the model didn't know anything about that story the other one is about the fact that uh, the model data was dated it was outdated so model didn't know anything about the new updates about this series let's see how we can make this uh, agent uh, smarter here so now this is the time that we want to connect the model to our vector database as you can see here the output of the chroma db here is search result and data frame previously we were trying to convert the data frame to message and then from there we could connect it to the model but here we do not have that situation because we are going to connect vector database to an agent an agent is going to decide when to use chroma db and when not so in order to do that there's another option and it's a tool mode you just activate the tool mode here and immediately you see the changes here the tool set option appears here and then you can connect it to the tools now agent can connect to the chroma db whenever it feels that it's needed to use those information so we need to put the agent instructions so i have it ready i just copy and paste it here so we have responsibility retrieval response reasoning and etc is ready what we need to do we just need to also make sure that i'm i'm just uh, putting the id here at least this way i make sure that it can recognize the tools it has so now we have everything ready let's just give it a try and try to ask the same question so actually it didn't do it actually let me ask this question nice this time when i ask about the specific name of the story uh, what it did it just went through the chroma search documents and it tried to retrieve the the story from there it retrieved the information there 
and then it used that one as a context. And now, as you can see in the output, I got the right answer. The story of Homer and Castle of Laughing Wings is a tale of setting the radiant corner. And yeah, that's what was in the story. So the other question I asked was about the second season of the Severance series. For that one, what we can do, we need to search internet for that. So interestingly that we have components here for search, if you go to the left, you can actually look up for search and then there are a lot of components. I'm going to use the search API because it's very easy to use and you need just to go to the search API website, sign up and then you with the free account, you get 100 credits that you can use to test this uh, component before you pay for that. So when you create the API key, you just paste in your API key here. And as always, I can just give it a try to see if everything is working. It's not working. It says bad request. Let me just see. Maybe my API key is not right. Let's put it again. Okay. It's working. My mistake was that I was not putting anything on the input side and testing the component without input. And of course it was not working. So now in order to use this component and connect it to our agent, we need to enable the tool mode, close this one, and then we can connect the tool set here. Now we connected two tools. And then after that, we need to also update our actually prompt here. I'm going to change the prompt and update the prompt because in the new prompt, we need also to make sure that we're going to search outside. So I'm going to add the name of the, it's a search component. So I'm just copy, paste the full name. And the other one, I think I need to, because it was different than what I had. Okay. Now I have everything in place. I can give it a try now. So probably I can go and copy the same question I had. By the way, these are the errors that I got once while I was testing the, the search component. So I ask the same question now. Let's see. Interesting. It's accessing immediately the search component and fetching the information from internet. And now, as you can see, I got the right answer here. So exactly what I was looking. As you can see, we managed to create a smarter rag solution with agent concept. We make it more smarter. We connect it to several tools and then you can actually make this much more further with connecting to various tools and based on the different scenarios, your agent can decide what kind of tools it needs to use in order to get you back with the right answer. I'm gonna also upload this the template to the community we have. I really recommend to join the community, help each other there. And uh, hopefully you like this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and looking forward to see you in our community and also the next video. Thank you.